Today we're going to talk about dealing with the anti-MLMers. So first I want to help you out if the network marketing haters in your life are friends and family members, people that actually know you. Next, I'm going to share with you how to deal with the haters if they're online people that maybe you don't know. And lastly, I want to share if you're getting network marketing hatred, what to focus on instead. So first, you may have noticed, depending on how long you've been in this game, that there has been an absolute increase in the fervor of anti-MLMers, of, of anti-network marketing kind of people. And I really think that it's because the reach that the average network marketer has, and, and quite frankly, the average person has, has increased. Whereas before, you would kind of have to be tuned in to hear about success stories around network marketing and whatever. With TikTok, Instagram Reels, and Facebook Reels, and, and, and other methods, those stories are being propagated at a much faster rate in a much bigger way. Anytime that you have um, a, a, a lot of, of success happening and it's being shown to people that aren't vibrationally aligned with success or aren't vibrationally aligned with you know some average ordinary person making money it's going to increase that the the fight against that one thing that i saw that that really it kind of blew me away but it also made sense was i saw a video jimmy fallon and brian cranston and it was a short goofy video about hats right and so they're trying on you know, little, little hat, short hat, big hat, you know, all the all, hats. It, you know, it was cute. It wasn't overwhelmingly awesome, but, but you know, it was funny. It was all right, whatever. And I just happened to see the comments and I'm like, oh my God. Like, like there were thousands of die. You guys suck. This is the worst, right? Like it was so negative. I'm like, oh my God. And so one, I think, first of all, a lot of society is more negative than it used to be. Period. Number two, success and hate seems to be getting more reach, you know, period, right? So there's just, there's just more, right? You know, you have people going viral on TikTok with hatred message as well as, you know, success messages. And so both parties are witnessing or being a part of, of, of these different things. It's really, it's really wild. You know, you now have more and more people at least hearing the idea of an average ordinary person can come into network marketing and, and make money. And for those that don't vibe with that, they actually don't like the idea of, of someone, you know, that isn't a professor or isn't a celebrity or isn't a whatever, being able to make money, more money than them, kind of grates against them, right? And so let me give you some, some how to deal with it. So if you have friends and family members and they're, you know, hating on you or they're rejecting you or whatever, don't try to convince them. Stop trying to turn them around, right? Stop trying to show them examples. Stop trying, stop trying to dance for someone who will never applaud you. And so if you have a friend or family member and they're like, oh, that network marketing is terrible, it sucks or whatever, say, cool, hey, thanks for your opinion, I appreciate it, move along. And I'm not saying that you have to ostracize them, I'm not saying that you have to unfriend them or, or whatever, just don't try to convince them. Stop spending energy on them. A great example is my wife, actually. So when we were dating, she joined my network marketing team, she was 21 years old, and she she started building, started building on her own. When she first started, she went to her family and they said, that's stupid, that why are you doing this? You have a degree and they were not fans to say the least. When she got to $10,000 a month, her two brothers joined, her mom joined, and her dad built her a spreadsheet. And so if you're trying to convince friends and family members uh, that it's great, before you do something and really make a splash, you're making a mistake. Stop doing that. Go make it rain without their support, without their approval, without their agreement. And this includes your spouse, by the way. Even if your spouse is hating on it, go do it, pay off his truck, and then, and then say, there you go, my friend, right? So you need to be willing to go fight the battle without their support. Fight the battle without their understanding. That's how you handle if they're friends and family members. Now, a more uh, insidious and kind of uh, uh, gross 
uh, you know, version of, of the network marketing haters is the the online trolls, and and they they literally are going out of their way to harm you. I do believe because you know I believe that you know in war there's you know both sides believe they're fighting the good fight, right? I have to think that I have to think that some of them do think they're doing good. They think that they're preventing whatever the mom and pop from spending a couple hundred bucks on a product or whatever like they they, li they literally think that they're saving people right they're not giving them any solutions but they're saving them from spending money and their hard-earned money going away regardless of how many testimonials of how many thousands and thousands of people have changed their life through network marketing they i really do believe some of them believe that they're doing a service. They believe they're doing good. They believe that they're saving the single mom's wages from being blown at, at your event. And this is where you need to understand that there is no magic or mysticism around network marketing, all right? It comes down to pipeline. It comes down to, you know, who makes money in real estate? The people that talk to people, right? Who makes money in network marketing? The people that talk to people. If someone is joining a network marketing company and they're told that they don't have to get customers, that they don't have to talk to people, that, you know, if they're, if they're being told that, then, then that person is doing a great disservice, right? Me, I tell them it's hard. <laughs> you know, this is hard work. You have to talk to people. You're going to get rejected. You're going to have people make fun of you, right? This isn't like, you know, when someone starts a job, no one's really making fun of them for that job. You join network marketing, you're probably going to have some people make fun of you because they just don't know. And one of the reasons that, that people have that kind of propensity toward network marketing is that it's such a low barrier of entry to start a business. You know, if they if you had to pay $150,000 like some people pay for a restaurant to start a network marketing business, all all the people that are um, not as strong-willed or disciplined, they just wouldn't do it. They would never be exposed to it. They'd be like, "Oh, I can't do that," right? Because it's so low barrier to entry, because you don't need a college degree, you don't need a certificate, you don't need a ton of money, you need a couple hundred bucks usually. Because it's so low barrier to entry, and because there's no requirement of training, you have a lot of untrained people, you know, pitching and hyping to people that you know resonate with it and, and want to do something that's going to be nice and easy. I would rather say it's hard. But how you deal with the online trolls, and these people will go out of your way. I mean, there's there's a group right now that is like, you know. Uh, sending letters, they're flagging videos, uh, like like they're lying, they're creating you know lying videos about others, and it's really it's really nasty. How you handle them? Also, don't try to convince them. I would not engage with them, and because of the way these groups of people tend to operate, I if you're in network marketing and you start getting a bunch of anti MLM hate, I used to say, hey, bring on the hate, you know, let them comment, let them do this stuff but they play so low below the belt. I mean, they'll flag your videos for nudity. They'll, they'll, they'll do all kinds of crazy stuff. I would just block them. I would just block them. And so that's some suggestions on how to handle some of the hatred that you may be getting. And know this, if you're not playing big, you ain't getting any hatred. And so the bigger you play, the more you show up, the more videos you do, the more people you talk to, you're going to run into this kind of thing. So if you're running into this kind of thing, congratulations, you're on the path. If you're not running into this kind of thing, then you're probably keeping it a little bit too secret. So I'd love to hear from you. Are you, do you agree with my statements or do you think I'm totally wrong? Am I, am I off base here? Love to hear from you. Um, drop me a comment in, in the comment section. I read and respond to every comment. So lastly, what should you focus on instead? It's really simple. Focus on what you want. So something that I do, anytime I, I get sucked into negative land, right? And know that, you know, why are there haters of anything, right? Why are, why are there trolls of anything? Why are there, you know, bullies, right? Because they're literally online bullies, right? Why are they bullies? At the end of the day, it's because they feel a certain way about themselves, which isn't good, and they want others to feel as bad as they do about themselves. That's what it boils down to. It really does. And so know that hurting people hurt, you know, people that have been through bad stuff and they haven't worked through it, it's much easier for them to try and make other people feel bad too, right? And so a part, a big part of me has, you know, sympathy and I, and I wish for peace. I wish for peace amongst these people that spend their days, 
just online, you know, attacking, right? I, I, I wish them peace, I wish them love. I hope they find something they're passionate about, like a charity or a cause or, you know, whatever, right? Something they're passionate about, because that's what the human race is, is here for, is to pursue our passions. And our passions will find us making an impact, feeling more significant, making a difference, loving our life. And so what to focus on instead is to focus on what you actually want. So one thing I do when I find myself going in a negative land is one, I express. So I express, okay, what am I being negative about? What is affecting me? What am I thinking? or how am I feeling that I don't want to think or feel anymore? And so I express it, I don't suppress it, right? That's what causes disease, is you suppressing all this stuff and bottling it all up and serenity now, right? And so instead I express it, here are the things I don't like that I'm thinking and feeling, here are the things, and then I say, okay, what is it I do wanna think and feel? What is it, what kind of mental rehearsal can I do about crafting my perfect life, about crafting what I actually want, of seeing my life in a, in a stage that it's not yet there, but see it as if it already is. And the number one skill that you can develop is to see things as you want them to be before they are. You see, most people, they, they, they say things like, well, if I hit that rank, then I'll feel better. If I do, if, if something outside of me happens, then I'll feel inside better. And that's not how it works. You know, like the great Dr. Joe Dispenza says, your personality is creating your personal reality. And so the way that you think, act, and feel is literally having you have an experience with your reality about what is going on around you. So if we wanna change what's out there, we have to change what's in here. And so shifting your focus away from those thoughts of stress and negativity and why are they attacking me and how come they're haters and all this stuff to what is it I actually want? I wanna make a difference. I wanna help put you know clothes on the on the on the homeless. I want to help feed, you know, the hungry. I want to help, you know, bring clean drinking water. I want to help kids in foster care. Thinking about what is the life you actually want to have and spending more time with memories of your future than noticing what's going on in your present. Now, if you need some help, we have a great accountability and coaching program uh, that I'll put down below. It's called All Inner Circle. And if you want someone that you can actually hop on the phone with and talk to personally and get your help that you need based on where you're at, then feel free to fill out the information in the form below. I'll put a link down in the description. Answer the questions. One of our teammates will reach out to you and we'll see if it's a fit for you and we'd love to help you.